kind of electric. There are a lot of people who are kind of electric these days. And with the rising price of gasoline, more are thinking about hopping on the electric vehicle bandwagon. The message coming from the top. The future of transportation in our nation and around the world is electric. And trickling all the way down to local cities like Los Angeles, which now boasts public charging stations, electric street sweepers, plug-in construction equipment, and more. Meanwhile, local businesses are realizing clean electrical transport is the way to go, like here in Hollywood. And drivers explore a variety of gas-free vehicles, from the basic to the extraordinary. We take a look back at the earliest electric cars and forward to what the future might hold. Fox 11 News in depth starts right now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fox 11 News in depth. I'm Hal Eisner, and we're at the Peterson Automotive Museum in the Miracle Mile. And, you know, we're talking about electric cars this half hour. And if you thought that electric cars are a new phenomenon, uh, well, you, you may be wrong about that. I mean, this car, it's a concept car from 2016. It's an electric hypercar. They say it's a 2016 Faraday future. But 101 years earlier, got that 101 years earlier? A company came out with this car. This was a, 20, a 1915 Detroit electric model, 61 Brougham. And this guy right here is Leslie Kendall. And he's the chief historian of the Peterson Automotive Museum. First of all, I'm, I'm amazed by this vehicle you're standing next to. Well, Hal, I think you're, you're in really good company because a lot of people can't, first of all, they can't believe that electric cars have been around this long. And even longer than this, 1915 was actually late in electric car development because they had been around since uh, Robert Anderson in Scotland in 18, about 1839 made the first electric car with dry cell batteries. Whoa, whoa, so there was an electric car in 1839. Wow. Ish. Oh, wow. It's amazing. So tell us about this exhibit that you've got here at the Peterson. Uh, it's got a number of different electric vehicles. Well, we like to show people, we, we know sort of where we're going, but we like to show people where we've been so that they can kind of extrapolate for themselves what they think the future might, might end up being. So we've got a Detroit Electric. From the, from the teens, a car that was very popular with the ladies of the day. Pretty pretty plush interior there. A plush interior. Um, it, it has the seats are arranged in a conversational grouping. Yeah, I can uh, see that. Yeah, the seat, the, there's the back of the uh, front seat actually uh, is against the windshield of the car. So uh, batteries in the front, batteries in the back, an electric motor underneath. And the ladies loved it because they didn't have to get out and crank it. They could just walk in, sit down, flip a switch, and take off. 1915, and, and this vehicle plugged into a, a power outlet? It plugged into a kind of charger that it looks like it came from a Frankenstein's workshop, but, uh, but it nevertheless worked. And that's, you know, things evolve over time. When we talk about these electric vehicles, and I th we're looking at some now, uh, when we talk about these electric vehicles, it's always a political hot potato. Has it kind of always been that way? It feels to me like these early cars were just novelties. Am I right about that? Um, in, in a way, they were novelties, um, but there's a segment of the population called early adopters, and they will always want something, and they'll always get something uh, before anybody else. Um, and it was the same with the electric vehicles. Believe it or not, in the late 1800s, uh, there was a steam car manufacturer in Los Angeles who said, oh, no, 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 electricity is not where it's at. Um, gasoline power, not where it's at. Um, uh, steam, that's where it's at. Because it was, in the day, understandable. You could perfect it. But uh, eventually they came to the point where electrics became so popular that in 1900 they, were, they outsold gasoline and steam-powered cars, at least for a time. Now, we had, we had gasoline crises here and there. Back in the 1970s, we had one there. It, when these things happen, is that when all of a sudden people start saying, electric is the future? They, they do tend to do that. People have very short memories because, you know, a month from now, if gasoline is, you know, at one ninety nine a gallon, they're going to, you know, a lot of people will be back out buying SUVs and, and the, you know, the EVs on the dealer lots might be sitting there. But who knows? You know, we, we see the situation now where we've got gas up over five, six dollars a gallon. And this electric thing, it sounds like people are starting to think about it. Well, it's making a lot of sense for a lot of people, including um, so many that the major auto manufacturers, people who once, you know, carried the, the, the standard 
for internal combustion engines are now thinking electric. It has to be the future. Because when you, when you get right down to it, electric cars have very few moving parts. They're a lot more reliable. They're quieter. They're cleaner as an end user. And it's got a lot. And they're more powerful, too. They've got so much going for them. And so let's talk about the future for a second, because sometimes they say if you look at the past, it helps to sort of dictate the future. You, you wouldn't necessarily agree with that. I know. I think I think in general that's true. But I think sometimes when you're when you're picking out the, you know, the exact year or even the exact decade that something's going to happen, that there's going to be a turnaround. It's different because. Circumstances change so fast. Circumstances change, and so do designs. And so does technology. And the technology that was here uh, for this car enabled it only to go maybe 50 or 60 miles. And up until, you know, a a few years ago, that was still about what you got from the uh, average electric car. Now it's hundreds of miles. And and they didn't make that many of these. This one they made, what, 3,000 back in the early 1900s? They made about 3,000. And coincidentally, that was about the price, 2,500 to 3,000, which was a lot of money when a Ford Model T, for example, cost maybe five or 600. Um, you, were, you could get a Model T, or you could you know, you get six or seven Model Ts, or you can get one of these. Well, what do you tell people out there about electric vehicles, and that is an option? What, what, what is your sense as a historian? That um, people buy what's convenient. They like convenience. They like um, to buy what they know. And as people be, get to know electric cars better, as they become a um, more familiar um, part of living, uh, and the range anxiety that you experienced with something like a 1950 Detroit Electric. That only got 80 miles. That only got 80 miles, 60 or 80 miles, you know, evaporates. Uh, then you can start thinking, well, maybe this thing they said, maybe a fast charging car, you know, something that I can, that I can charge as quickly as I can fill my tank. Maybe that's going to tip the scales. And, and Leslie Kendall, a good example of that might be hybrid vehicles because they came in and, and then eventually they took off. Well, you have to and think. And we only have 15 seconds, so. Okay. Hybrids were only as good uh, until batteries became better because once they could have substitute that, that um, gasoline power plant that generated the, the electric with batteries, then uh, that was over. Which gets back to the point it really is all about technology, which continues to advance. And And as you continue to take a look down this exhibit here at the Peterson Automotive uh, Museum, I'll tell you, the Fox 11 News in Death will continue. We'll be talking not only about electric vehicles, but this time how they're being used by the city of L.A. and private companies. We'll be back right after this. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Fox 11 News in Death. I'm Hal Eisner, and we're at the Peterson Automotive Museum in the Miracle Mile. And and we're talking about the history of electric cars. We're talking about the current interest in electric cars and the future of them. Let's talk about the history for a second. This right here was made by a Long Beach company. It's called the 1960 Electric Shopper. looks a little bit like a a golf cart. Uh, Certainly not the technology you would see today, but at the time, you know, it it held two passengers. It it did 30 miles on a single battery charge, operated for about a penny a day. Can't can't find anything that operates for a penny a day anymore. You can't even find any gum for a penny a day. But, But the thing is that these things have changed over time as technology has as well. Not only do people look for vehicles like this to drive around, cities look for it as well, and so do private companies, and that's what we're going to focus on this time. Greg Spots is with the Public Works Department for the City of Los Angeles, and, and Kami Farhadi is with Starline Tours. He's a chairman of the company. And gentlemen, thanks for joining us. And, and let me start with Greg. How is the City of Los Angeles using electric technology in your vehicles for public works? Hi, Hal. So, you know, at Streets LA, we want to be a leader in streets departments around the the country uh, in adopting zero emissions vehicles and even causing new vehicles to be created. Um, For example, we went to our motor sweeper manufacturer, Elgin, uh, who has been currently selling us sweepers powered by compressed natural gas. And we said to them, we want to go electric. And they said, well, you know, electric chassis of that large size are not yet available. They said, so how about we meet you halfway and we electrify the cleaning functions? They created a new product for us. We just got the first one in February. And by having the cleaning functions powered by a battery similar to the battery in a BMW i3, we burned 30% less fuel uh, with this plug-in hybrid sweeper. We have a mini sweeper 
that's only 48 inches wide, that's all electric, sweeping the downtown bike lanes. It's very narrow, made in Italy, and it slots in that tiny space there. So here we're using zero emission sweeping to promote zero emission cycling transportation. You know, one of the, the technological things that we all think about is the ability to plug this thing into something. So, so how do you deal with that with your vehicles? But more importantly, how do you and who's involved in creating an infrastructure here in Los Angeles uh, for people who have these kind of vehicles, electric vehicles? Well, you know, for the consumer, L.A. has more charging points than almost any other place in the country. And obviously, uh, there's a lot of folks working on building many more of them. The city's uh, working on turning some of your streetlight poles into a charging location. For my agency, most of our vehicles go back to the same yard every night and sit and wait till the next weekday morning. It's a perfect case for electric vehicles because we can charge them overnight. It's not like a, you know, a cross-country truck that needs to keep moving. So we have actually an early adopter use case for a lot of our vehicles, and we want to prove to uh, other cities that you can do it. Uh, we hope by the end of the year to field what we think might be the country's first ever zero emissions tree planting crew staffed solely with zero emissions electric vehicles. And let me just ask you before we move on to Cami, uh, what about backhoes and forklifts and all these kind of different sort of vehicles that the city of Los Angeles uses when they're dealing with our streets, when they're dealing with all the different kinds of infrastructure that we have to deal with? How much of that is or may be going to be electric at some point in time? Great question. It's changing fast. And one way we can help accelerate that change is as a big buyer, we can signal the industry that we want this stuff. So, for example, um, last week we went to a demonstration by Volvo of two small electric um, loaders and excavators. And the excavator was a perfect size and fit for our tree planting. So we're working on ordering one of those. Um, we currently are borrowing a pre-production Roush 25-foot uh, stake bed truck. And this week, we're delivering the barricades to support the LA Marathon with this pre-production electric truck. All right. Now, Cammy, let, let me ask you a couple questions here. First of all, right before the, the Hollywood Christmas parade, you gave me a call. You said, we're going to put an electric tour bus into the Hollywood Christmas Parade and unveil our new technology. So Starline Tours, those double-decker buses that we go through Hollywood and take tourists to come to Southern California around in. How's that working for you? You've got one of those buses now? We do. We have one, and it's been working very well. We have been testing it. And it so was what, what, Let me just ask you, let me just ask you real, let, let me ask you real quick. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. And it's saving you gas? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because it's 100% uh, electric. It's not a hybrid. It's 100% electric drive. Um, we've been testing it now for uh, a number of months. This is it. You can see on the screen. And uh, not only did we do the, uh, the parade with it, but it's actually doing the route into downtown and back up again on a daily basis. Let me ask you, Cami, what is the tourist experience like in there? Is it more quiet? Is it a little different ride? What's it like? It's a, it's a silent drive, and it's very gentle. You can, you know, I suppose it's a surprise when it starts to move because there's no noise of the engine before everything gets going. And that does surprise people a little bit. But they have been, you know, pre-warned that it's an electric drive and, and uh, they're not, you know, they're prepared for it, I suppose, to a certain extent. I want to ask you, are you planning to get more of these things out there on the road? Absolutely. I, we've, we've had real good success with it. It's been behaving itself. And, and we, at the moment, only we are left with 40 percent of the power at the end of each day. So it could do more miles than we actually need which is quite amazing. So if we do get a longer service or we get a night requirement for a charter, we still have the capacity to do that as well as the full day's work. Well, Cammy, thank you so much. So the, the star of the new Starline Tours line is, is the electric bus. Greg Spots, thank you. Coming up next on Fox 11 News In Depth, we continue our look at electric vehicles and we continue our look here at the Peterson Museum. We'll talk with the Auto Club about what they see as the future of electric technology in our vehicles. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Fox 11 News in Depth. I'm Hal Eisner. We are still at the Peterson Automotive Museum and the Miracle Mile. And looking at electric cars, they have quite the exhibit here. I want to show you one. This one here is a mini commuter. It's a 2001 Nissan Hyper Mini. Its top speed was 62 miles an hour. It got a range of about 72 miles. Again, this is from 2001. But it's interesting when you think about the Japanese electric cars. They were using them back in World War II because in World War II, they had a hard time getting gasoline. You know, just a couple of months ago, electric cars just outsold diesel cars for the first time ever. In December, more than 20 percent of new cars sold were all electric, while diesel car sales fell to about 19 percent. The change is largely due to government incentives that make electric cars more affordable and also the increasing variety of electric vehicles available. And joining us right now, is Doug Shoup with the Auto Club of Southern California. Doug, how you doing? Good to see you again. Hi there, Hal. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. I, I, you've got a very important role in this show to tell us why these things may be more important than ever uh, for consumers today as gas prices go on up. Well, yeah, you know, here in the Los Angeles area, drivers with that typical mid-size sedan with a 14-gallon size fuel tank, they're paying about $28 more to fill up that tank of gas today compared to one year ago. And whenever these gas prices rise, especially given the increases we've seen over the last couple of weeks, consumer interest in electric vehicles starts to peak. And that's what we are seeing is more and more people uh, are interested in their next vehicle being an electric vehicle. In fact, AAA has done a study which shows about 40 million Americans have shown interest in buying an EV for their next vehicle. I have to tell everybody, you and I, I think, were together last on the day after the invasion of Ukraine when prices started to climb. And we talked about the incredible increase in just a matter of 24 hours. Now, a couple weeks later, three weeks later, it's amazing what's happened to these prices. It really is. I mean, it just was raising eyebrows and people were thinking, you know, how are they going to continue to do their daily commuting and taking kids to school and going to work and caring for loved ones, but also leisure travel, especially given what we've been through over the last two years with COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns and restrictions. And now that things are loosening up, people want to take those bucket list uh, road trips again and go and reconnect with friends and family. And they need, of course, gasoline if they have a gas powered car to do so. So people are really thinking about what are other alternative fuel vehicles, including electric vehicles that could help them not only in their daily commutes, but also when it comes to leisure travel, because we've actually done some research and studies that show People are willing to cut back on shopping. They're willing to cut back on dining out. They're willing to consider carpooling, but they don't want to give up their leisure travel. People do make it a priority within their budget to take vacations. And of course, road trips is the number one uh, mode of transportation for all of the big holiday weekends. Doug, I have to ask you, you know, we, we have gas stations on every corner, but we don't have electric plug-ins that kind of infrastructure on every corner. Well, what's it going to take to make this much more accessible for, for people who might like to move into electric vehicles? Well, we're certainly in better shape here in Southern California than many parts of the country. But uh, what our studies have found, in fact, we did a study back in 2020 uh, where we surveyed electric vehicle owners, 71 percent of whom had not previously owned an electric car. And it revealed some very interesting things. The majority of people, 96 percent of people who were surveyed said that they would buy or lease an electric vehicle for their next car. It also found that 43 percent say they drive more now in their electric vehicle than they did when they had a gas uh, powered counterpart. And about 78 percent also reported that uh, they did have a gas vehicle in the car as well, but reported doing more of their driving in their electric vehicle. The most surprising thing, though, was that the electric vehicle owners told us that simply owning a vehicle erased the two biggest fears that they had for getting an electric vehicle, which would be range anxiety, running out of a charge during a trip, and also finding a place to actually charge that electric vehicle. Those owners who have an electric vehicle now said that just simply having it 
got rid of those two biggest fears for them. And so what our research has found that once people take that step to purchase an electric vehicle, they certainly do find the benefits of it. And they're not scared to own one anymore. Hey, we only have about a minute left, but one thing we haven't really talked about are hybrid electrics. Uh, I'm a hybrid owner myself. I've been for several cars, but the hybrid electric, uh, that, that's kind of a, a nice happy place between the two. It is. It's a lot more of a comfort level for folks because they feel like they're, you know, increasing their their fuel efficiency, but that they're not necessarily tied to plugging in that vehicle. And so there's so many different options out there on the market today. You know, not only the hybrid vehicles, electric vehicles, other alternative fuel vehicles. And uh, we have an actual free resource, a free website where people can go and do their research about the different types of not only the new alternative fuel vehicles on the market, but also the advanced driver assistance systems. They could just go to aaa.com forward slash car guide and do the research about the type of types of alternative fuel vehicles that are out there on the market these days, because it's really going to depend on what your household needs, your driving habits, you know, how many people you have in the family. But, you know, there's so many different alternatives and varieties on there. You can get alternative fuel vehicles that are sports cars, uh, SUVs, pickup trucks. All, there's just all so kinds. much on the market. All kinds of vehicles. Yeah, all kinds. All kinds. As always, Doug Shoup, very informative. Doug Shoup with the Auto Club of Southern California. Thanks for joining us. And Fox 11 News in Depth continues right after this break. Be right back. And finally, if you haven't already, check out my podcast. It's called What the Hell, and it's available wherever you subscribe to podcasts. Or just go to whatthehellpodcast.com, and you can listen to this program in your electric, gas, or hybrid vehicle while you're out on the road. That's it for this week's Fox 11 News in Death. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll give me one last look here at the Peterson Museum's electric car exhibit. Interesting looking cars. See you next time, everybody. Bye-bye.